At this time, we would like to welcome everyone and ask you to please stand for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. You're not going to sing with us? <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land <laughs> well, good evening and welcome to McKinley Field and the opening of our project. Champaign Unifor Schools is happy to host you at our first official event as we close out the final day of students and tomorrow we celebrate our graduates. Uh, my name is Susan Zola and I'm the superintendent of Champaign Unit 4, completing my 30th year in Champaign Unit 4 and my 37th. And it is so nice to see so many familiar faces who have supported Champaign Public Education. If I could take a minute, I have uh, board members and former board members who are here. So if you could please stand. I see my Board of Education. Thank you there. Ms. Armstrong here. Kathy Richards, former board member. I don't know if you realize that what's actually hard. Oh, there's Dr. Baker. It, uh, actually, harder than being the superintendent is being a board member during a pandemic. So their service is to be appreciated and applauded. And if you get a chance privately to thank them for their time, they do um, many, many hours. So we are super excited to have you here. The weather is perfect for this evening. And at this time, uh, I will turn it over to Miss Aldridge, who has our uh, evening plan for us. Which basically means I have no idea what's going on. Good evening, my name is Joe Williams. I'm the principal of Central High School, and Susan, clearly, there's been a switch on the agenda. I am pretty sure we have changed the program. The program has I'm pretty changed. Sure we took a memo on this. So. It absolutely has. So at this point, we do want to go ahead and introduce our alumni choir, and they're going to sing a song. I had these guys in middle school. They turned out pretty good. <laughs> How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good times that made us laugh outweigh the bad. Forever's gone away 
It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know where this road is going to lead. All I know is where we've been and what we've been through. If we get It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday And I'll take with me the memory To be my sunshine after the rain It's so hard Today, but we'll take with us the memories to be our sunshine after the rain. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! It's so hard. They turned out great. We got to go in there, Will Kyle. <laughs> so they did not bring me up to sing. How about that? <laughs> We bring greetings. I'm Will Kyles, obviously you know that. We bring <laughs> greetings from the office of the mayor on the behalf of the mayor. A proclamation. Whereas Dr. Susan Zola is retiring after a stellar career of nearly four decades as an educator, administrator, and leader in our local schools, and whereas she was born in Paris, Illinois. She was. <laughs> and graduated as a class president of Paris High School in the class of 1980. That's a big surprise. There we go. <laughs> big surprise. And we have more. Whereas she married David Zolo, married May 2nd, 1989, and they had three children, Sarah Ann and Luke Ann, whereas Dr. Zola received her bachelor's and master's degree from Eastern Illinois University. She so re received her doctorate from the University of Illinois. ILL. My alumni. <laughs> yeah. And whereas her teaching career spanned 37 years and began with one year at a Catholic school in Chicago and six years at Thomas Paine Elementary School in Urbana. Oh, and Urbana shout out. There we go. <laughs> yeah, a little Urbana Tiger. Yeah. You heard that shout out? <laughs> Dr. Ivy Tatum heard it. Preston Williams heard it. If they heard it, they counted. <laughs> Whereas, in 1990, she moved to Unit 4 School District in Champaign. There she spent five years as the principal of Dr. Howard Elementary School, nine years as the principal of Jefferson Middle School, and three years as the director of Title I Literacy, four years as the assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, and five years as the assistant superintendent for achievement, curriculum, and instruction, and Man. whereas. <laughs> you got a lot of whereas. It is, yeah. but that's a great, that's a great career. <laughs> Dr. Zola was named the superintendent of Unit 4 School District in 2017, and has served in that role with distinction for four years, 
and oversaw the district's projects to rebuild or update eight buildings as part of a $266 million capital project. She was named the Superintendent of Distinction for the IASA Illini region in 2021 and whereas <laughs> you got that whereas down. That's good. Dr. Zola's leadership often accompanied by a song, which was sang before I can't sing, <laughs> will be missed by the members of our community and the staff of her school district. However, the impact of her efforts have been felt by 37 years of students so far and will be felt by generations of students yet to come. Now, therefore, <laughs> I, Deborah Fink, Frank Finan, Mayor of the City of Champaign, Illinois, do hereby proclaim May 24, 2021 to honor the career and mark the retirement of Dr. Susan Thanks, Zola. Thank you, Will and Sue Aldred. You are amazing at pulling off this program change. <laughs> so my name is Amy Armstrong. I'm proud to serve along with six other board members uh, on the Champaign Unit 4 School Board. And when Susanna, or Sue asked me to speak, I thought well, there's going to be lots of people talk about your career. But I found some words about you that I thought I would share. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all others doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them back up with worn out tools, if you can make one heap of all of your winnings and risk it on one turn of the pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And you, Dr. Zola, deserve so much with this retirement and all that comes with resting and playing golf and tennis from here. You deserve the rest. You've taught us as a Board of Education always about the high road as much as it's always taxed me sometimes to meet you there, but you remind us to always take the high road, be gracious, offer grace, and keep our heads in the work. So our appreciation to you for your service, for your leadership, and always you have our gratitude and friendship. Congratulations. Go back to grad school. Hey, you never know. <laughs> uh, again, my name is Dr. Preston L. Williams, Jr. And I've had the pleasure of knowing this young lady for a few years. I figured I'm not going to be here and do kind of that stale, long speech. When you have an opportunity, we'll sit down and have a cup of coffee and compare notes. Okay. 
Uh, I was superintendent of Urbana uh, School District 116 for a number of years. I also taught at Centennial High School for a number of years as well. Uh, some of you don't really know one of the most famous things about Dr. Zola prior to her being Dr. Zola is that she was one of the greatest Tetris players uh, in our cohort. Grad school. Uh, it was amazing. She would be sitting back there and you're supposed to be on your laptop taking notes and all of those good things. And I kind of walked by her one day and I saw these little things going in. And all of a sudden the professor asked her a question. She answered it. Oh. I'm like, hmm, okay, multitasking. Uh, Susan has always been a go-getter. Uh, and quite honestly, throughout the years, I've watched in amazement as she not only helped raise a family, uh, work in a school district, go through the ladder, so to speak, of proving yourself, and then getting the opportunity to be a superintendent. And quite honestly, I tell people all of the time, the thing about being a superintendent is this, when you make it look easy, and then someone else steps up next, it's not as easy as they thought it was. Susan, you made it look easy. And that's very important. Your legacy is secure. You came in after a tough act to follow. You shepherd through multi-million dollar projects. And that's always fun, dealing with contractors, engineers, staff, principals. You said something there, uh, council person, that I, I, I kind of took a little bit exception to. As a superintendent, you are an educator. You are a top educator. You better know just about everything there is to know about education because you know what? Someone's going to call you on it. Your wit has always been tremendous. Sometimes it can be a little biting, but that's okay. Sometimes it's necessary. But again, your legacy, you can look around. You can look around at the people that you've influenced the positivity that you've shown, not only here in this district, but in Urbana and throughout the state and the nation. So I congratulate you, I celebrate you, and I leave you with this. Please understand that there's one word that you really need to learn how to say as a retired superintendent, and that word is no. <laughs> It's probably a battery issue. Uh, yeah. I thought it was a fan. So <laughs> 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 you only get 80%, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We got a dead battery. We have any batteries <clears throat> in the crowd? Please? Teacher boy? Uh, yeah, right. Teacher boy. <laughs> teacher boy. You can do a teacher voice like you're on stage. Yeah. Teacher voice? Yeah. I did. <laughs> I know. I was a teacher in the time I since I saw you. moving furniture. Make sure they work. Sounds like it. All right, man. You're safe, man. All right, buddy. Mr. Walls? It's me again. I know, yes. I see you. Um, but I'm Mike Kane. Oh, you're Mike Kane. So, yes, imagine. <laughs> oh, I'm going to channel some Mike Kane. Great. Uh, hi, hi, Susan. Susan. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight due to another commitment. I think back to that time at a conference in Columbus, Ohio, when I was assistant superintendent in Unit 4, and you were teaching at Thomas Paine in Urbana. 
I knew you were interested in being a principal and we had an opening at Dr. Howard. You see, your reputation had preceded you as an outstanding teacher who was passionate about children. Fellow teachers and administrators raved about your leadership skills. So during a pause at the conference, we had a sincere conversation about you applying for this job. Clearly one of the best hires we made for Unifor. As an aside, one day I was visiting schools and I asked you how things were going at Dr. Howard. You said fine, but no amount of education could prepare me for how to fix the leaky urinals in the boys' bathroom. Um, the more I reflected upon your outstanding career in Unit 4, I realized we followed similar paths. Our first principalships were at a young age in two of the most storied neighborhood um, schools at Dr. Howard and Southside, respectively. We were both middle school principals as well, you at Jefferson and me at Columbia Franklin. That's where we met. I know. Um, we both served in various curricular capacities at the central office, and finally, we finished our careers as superintendent. In my tenure, we constructed new schools at Barkstall, Stratton, and the Early Childhood Center. In your case, massive renovation and new construction across the school district after passing a major referendum to get it done. To top it all off, we had to navigate through uncharted waters during our final year as I was dealing with the consent decree and you a global pandemic. My heart went out to you this year because every day was like calling a snow day. No matter what the decision, some will be unhappy. Just know that you had a positive impact on the many students, teachers, and staff that you worked with over the years. You were always a strong advocate for them. Also, your positive, upbeat approach to life in general was infectious to those around you. The Champaign community will miss you. Just some advice as you enter retirement, take some time to breathe and decompress. Things will slow down dramatically and don't feel guilty for taking a power nap every now and then. Um, I'm happy for you, Susan. You've had an outstanding career and I'm fortunate to have worked with you as a colleague and friend. Think much better looking. Blonde. This is from Carol Stack. Carol couldn't be here because she's with her mom. Okay, so she says, and she also typed this on her phone. Very impressive. Yeah, she's very smart. Kudos for a job well done with dignity, integrity, and grace, my friend. Having walked in your superintendent's shoes, albeit as an interim for only one year, I know the challenges you have been faced with and the toll it can take on one's health, physically and mentally. Those who truly know you and your character know that you have put your heart and your soul into the past four years with one goal in mind, to make it a better learning and teaching environment for students and teachers. Don't ever doubt that you have made a positive difference these last four years. Hold your head high as you wrap up these final weeks. Your professional career in this district and everything you have given to it is your legacy. See, legacy, Preston said that too. Oh, and one more thing, David would be so very proud of you. Best wishes for all, see you on the front nine. Well, Susan, I'm here not for my lawyer voice, okay? Um, this is one of those uh, thanks for the memory moments that we have. Uh, I, I've got two hats. One is a St. Pat's hat, and the other is a CU Schools Foundation hat uh, in our relationship. My wife Barbara and I have known Susan since it seems forever. I think it's back in the 80s. We were uh, fellow parishioners at St. Patrick's Church in Urbana. Susan was a teacher at Thomas Paine, and so some of our friends, kids, she was uh, their teacher. Uh, Susan was dating David, who was a friendly rival on the other St. Patrick's softball team, and uh, the one that had the priest on it, okay? And so they always won the games, because <laughs> they had the priest, okay? Um, we all, see, I reflect on that, we all seem so young, and summer days like today, not unlike the weather today, uh, fellowship and friendship, uh, really, really happy times. Uh, Susan, as might be expected, 
has been a very active parishioner at St. Patrick's Church. And she and David had one of those weddings, you know, your friend's wedding, that you will never forget. It was just an absolutely incredible event. Uh, our families grew. Uh, ours were a little ahead of yours, but we've watched our families uh, grow. And I think I'm ahead of you and grandchildren now. And uh, thinking of all those times just brings smiles. We have really, really good memories. Now, more recently, I caught up with Susan again uh, through Champaign-Urbana Schools Foundation. Uh, you probably didn't know about the other duties as assigned as superintendent. One of the other duties as assigned is your membership and participation with the CU Schools Foundation Board. And we have monthly reports for both the Urbana schools and the Champaign uh, schools. And I will tell you, Susan's reports are incredible. <laughs> They're just incredible. Uh, at a virtual meeting, because I'm the one that sends out the invitation, I get to see everybody's smiles when Susan reports. And if you can bring smiles at a virtual meeting, you really have talent. And Susan <laughs> really does have has talent. She's always up front, very candid and accurate in the joys and problems of Unit 4 as she kept the school's foundation board up to date. You have to have a sense of humor to be superintendent, um, and you have to find the brighter side of life as you deal with serious problems. Uh, the pandemic, as mentioned, has been a perfect example where Susan worked with CU Schools Foundation and other community agencies to find solutions to real problems that we never knew could possibly exist. Uh, I reflect on all the memories with Susan, and frankly, it still causes me to smile. Thank you and Godspeed, Susan. Oh, Junior, this is not good. <laughs> We've gone back to college. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> This should be very scary for you. It is a, a, I, I, actually, Sue, we only had the, the track. I was going to say, you, you're, you're going to have to pay more for the track because I got a little bit of stuff. Good with college friends. <laughs> well, if well, you, you notice, she called me junior. So I come from 750 miles away in Washington, D.C. to go to Eastern Illinois University, the Harvard of the Midwest. There you go. Go Panthers. That's, That's right. right. And who do I meet but Susan Stats? It's still difficult for me to call her Dr. Zola. Well, first of all, I won't call her doctor. But I will call her Susan Zola. And she, the reason why I call her mom was she stepped up and served a role of being an advisor for me, being 18 years old, 750 miles away from my parents which is scary and great all in the same breath. Um, but she took me under her wing. And then I graduate, I become a guidance counselor, I become a principal. First time I saw Susan as a principal at Champaign Jefferson, all I could hear was her infectious laugh and her enjoyment about being a principal and probably was one of the biggest dorks that there is in a middle school. And that's why you were so good at it. So I decided I wanted to mold myself, which kind of sounds disgusting, but we'll, we'll skip that for a second, um, and be fun and enjoy the process and treat kids with respect and dignity 10 days out of 10, because they'll always remember the one you don't. And you did that from the very first moment I ever met you, Susan. And for that, I will always be grateful. Now, let's talk intelligence. The only thing that makes me look semi-intelligent is I retired at the end of last school year. <laughs> now, I'm not going to ask if you dye your hair. I do. But you can see how gray my hair is. I don't dye mine, but I, it would be completely gray had I had to deal with the things, just being an administrator in a middle school as opposed to a superintendent and going through all of the things that you've done. Your legacy will live on, and you'll always be in my heart, and we better be playing some golf. And we are. Thanks for everything. Woo!
That was close. Okay. Our final speaker for tonight texted me about an hour ago to say that his wife was having contractions, and he thought he probably shouldn't leave. I hope it's not Eli. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Eli. Okay, My name is Ted Powers. I'm pitch hitting from him for him. Dr. Susan Zola was once my chauffeur. Yes, 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 you heard that right. The Dr. Susan Zola, former principal superintendent and prominent figure in our community, was my chauffeur. You may be wondering who I am and why she would do that for me. So let me explain. The first time I met Susan was at a staff Christmas party at the Zolas. I was David's student at the time, and he'd asked me and a few others to show up at his house in a white shirt and a red bow tie and help the work party. I was excited about the opportunity to work for my professor and impressed that David had such a cool wife. A principal hosting a Christmas party for her whole entire staff and hiring workers wearing bow ties? Oh, sounds legit. And she was legit. And she even sent me home with the leftovers. She knew I was a hungry college kid, and she was just looking out for me. She continued to look out for me. She'd give me rides to and from my fraternity on campus, and take me back to her house so that I could hang out with my buddy, Luke. This went on through most of my college career, and this is why I got to call her my chauffeur. I know, it's a bit of a stretch, but it caught your attention. As the years went on, our relationship continued to grow. She was there to prepare me for an interview where I landed my first teaching job at Centennial. Thank goodness she had connections, or I would never have made it home from that interview. You, know, you can ask her about that later. She was there to mentor me through difficult decision to move my current teaching position. She blessed us with her presence at our wedding, countless Thanksgiving dinners, and has always been a phone call away if I needed anything. Our daughter's name, our first daughter's name, is Zola Grace. Bet you can't guess where that came from. We were blessed with the opportunity to share the wonderful news of our pregnancy with David before he passed. We wanted to honor him and his family with their namesake. Every day, every day, I'm reminded of the incredible impact Luke, Anne, Sarah, David, and Susan have had on me and my family. Susan, at one point, I only knew you as my professor's wife. I've learned over the years that you are way, way more than that. A strong woman, an incredible mother, loving wife, determined educator, and a genuine friend. We love you so much and are proud of your incredible career. We know that you're not done making a difference. And boy, we can't wait to see what your future holds. Ted. <laughs> Susan, all of the people here tonight are here because you've touched their lives in some way. Some colleagues, some friends, some family. But we all can't say thank you enough. So this is for you. <laughs> I've heard it said that people come into your lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn and we are led to those who help us most grow if we let them and we help them in return well I don't know if I believe that's true but I know we're who we are today because we knew you like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood who can say if we've been changed for 
the better because we knew you. We have been changed for good. It well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of us is made of what we've learned from you. You'll be with us like a handprint on our hearts. And now whatever way our stories end, and now whatever we are today by being our friend. Like a ship blown from its morning as a wind off the sea. Like a sea dropped from a sky bird in a distant wood. Who can say if we've been changed for the better? But because we knew you, because we knew you, we have been changed for good. Like a comet pulls the moment as it passes the sun. Like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood. Who can say if we've been changed for the better? We do believe we have been changed for the better. we knew you because we knew you we have been changed for good So are we ready to open McKinley now? Because <laughs> that's what I thought we were doing. I had all kinds of things to say about the track and the turf and the bleachers. And I'm feeling like none of that seems very relevant right now. So. Wow, like that's like middle school. Look how you turned out, dude. I'm like, all right, I was a little young man, right? Dr. Ivy Tatum, I see you over there pretending that you're the superintendent in Urbana. She's like, when do I get to retire? I'm like, I'm not really sure, but you're kind of young. Thank you. I just, um, yeah. I know we all, I was talking to Orlando. I see Orlando. And my cabinet's been amazing. You know, when you talk about my board of education, I see my cabinet here and many of our directors and some of our principals. Um, I don't know that anyone can underestimate whether you were a teacher trying to do band, pandemic-wise, right, or English, or be the principal of a high school under construction. Don't think we'll ever be able to underestimate um, what this last year was in terms of taking a toll on all of us at Servant Education. But we're here. We are still standing and we are stronger than ever. And we know that um, the resiliency um, that our students and each of us shared makes us stronger together moving forward. So I can promise you next fall, on the first day of school, parents will be super excited to send their children for a full day of school, five days a week. Oh, yes, we will. I am telling you, super excited that our teachers will be so happy to have children just in front of them to teach in person. And cafeteria duty and lunchroom duty and all of that will feel so good. So on behalf of my daughter, Anne is here. She's representing uh, our family. Sarah and Eli are taking a well-deserved anniversary break. Luke um, is um, hanging out in the group home. And David is here in spirit. Love you, Susan. Yeah. So 
we often wonder, and I was, Arlen and I had this conversation, if the pebbles that we drop do make a difference. And, um, and tonight you have reinforced as educators, when we choose our path, we choose wisely. Because there is no greater role than to build the hearts, minds, and spirits of our youth. So thank you for the privilege to serve both in Urbana and, and also in Champaign. And thank you for the privilege of sharing the journey with me. And of course, I have a song. Right. So long, farewell, I'll be to say goodbye, goodbye. You know you have a part in this, right? <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Thank you. God bless. Have a good night.